Watch you guys, got another cheap gaming PC build here for you. Here's the parts list. We've got the Nitro Plus, which is the Radeon RX 580, four gigabyte version. You can get these uh, pretty cheaply nowadays, but they're a great all round gaming card, uh, very affordable prices and plays all the latest games, even the AAA listed games. Now we're gonna be using the Patriot Viper uh, RAM here, eight gigabytes, and also we've got an SSD here to put into the machine. Ryzen 3 processor, Ryzen 3 1200 in fact, which is pretty cheap to buy at the moment, 50 odd pounds on Amazon for a four core and four thread CPU, which is an absolute bargain if you ask me. Also we've got EVGA, uh, the 600BQ bronze certified uh, power supply, which should be plenty of power for what we've got going on here. The case we got is a Sahara P10 sync, which is an RGB case, very uh, cheap and budget case, but for what we need here, this is gonna be ideal. And we've got an MSI B450 uh, Tom Hawk motherboard in the mix as well. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of the packaging and get it put together. Now this build is for my friend, uh, it's his daughter's PC, so she just wants something that's gonna play Minecraft and stuff like that. So this should be plenty powerful for what she needs. And uh, let's go ahead and get it out the box. So I've got the uh, motherboard out here. So let's go ahead and take out the AMD Ryzen 3. This is the first gen Ryzen 3 1200 quad core processor, which comes with the Ray Stealth Cooler, which is 55 pounds on Amazon, which makes it a very good bargain if you're just interested in playing a few games. It's got four cores and four threads, which is ample for most gamers and uh, that's what we're going to be using in this uh, cheap budget build. So you can see there's a little mark on the board here which tells you which way to put your CPU in. It's pretty self-explanatory. Pull the CPU out of the clamshell plastic and basically just put it into the board. I'll just take it out of the plastic casing here. And uh, the CPUs for AMD come with the pins actually on the CPU itself. And there's a little triangle here to tell you which way to put it into the socket on the board. You can see those pins there. Just be very careful not to bend any of these. Then you just pull the retention lever up and uh, slot that into the socket. Give it a little jiggle and pull down the retention lever. It's that simple. Nothing uh, too difficult there. Now this does come with the free uh, Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is pretty nice. And uh, for that sort of price point, it's really good. We don't need to use any sort of wall cooling or anything like that. We're going to use uh, the cooler that come with the kit. Just going to put the back plate onto the board. And then all we need to do here, it's got compound already on here, so we don't need to apply any compound. And uh, we just need to get the right orientation for the cooler and put it into the screw ports there and then screw it down. It's that simple. And uh, we can see here, and make sure the cable is in the right direction for where the uh, header is on the board so it makes it nice and easy. And just make sure it's lined up right. I'm just gonna drop this on. Now when I screw this down, you don't wanna over tighten these. I'm just gonna use a hand screwdriver here as I build all my computers with a hand screwdriver. You don't see me using electrical drills or anything like that. I don't see the much point in it because you can over tighten things. These are only small screws. Now don't over tighten these, go to to the point when it stops and then when you finish that screw you want to go to the opposite side and do that one okay and then work your way around so basically do a crisscross motion here rather than clockwise or anti-clockwise you don't want to do that now you may also see me just go to the next screw next to it and that's because I've already done the opposite screw I've just edited that out the video so you don't see that one so it just looks like I'm going against exactly what I told you to do, but I've already done uh, that type of screw already. And that's pretty much it. So we've got that all on there now. That should be nice and tight. Just go around and do the last screw here. And again, your CDs are going in a crisscross motion. That's the best way to do it. Now again, you can use a hand screwdriver, which I'm using here, or you can use electrical screwdriver if you wish, if that's what you want to do. Personally, I like to use hand screwdrivers. There's nothing wrong with electrical screwdrivers. Um, as long as they've got a clutch on them and they don't over tighten things or shred any screws, but the screws are so small, I don't see much need for electrical screwdriver, to be honest with you. That's just my personal uh, choice. So we're just gonna put in the uh, 
cable into the header of the board here. This is the CPU fan. Now you may see CPU fan and you may also see CPU pump and that's because there are two different uh, types of headers on the board for two different things. So now we're going to be putting in the RAM. Went for the Patriot Viper 8GB 2x4GB sticks here, DDR4, 3000 MHz XMP memory, dual channel. And this memory was nice and cheap and it was good enough for what we need here. Try to pick up the same colour theme and design on the board as it is on the memory, just to try and tie it in a little bit. I know we're on a budget, but it's always nice to try and match a few little bits up if we can. And of course, this memory is upgradable, uh, it's 8 gigabytes, it should be plenty really for what she needs. But we're trying to work to a budget here and that's what I stuck to, so you do have some restrictions on things that you can get and I try to get a nice balanced uh, setup. Now the memory itself is quite good quality for the money, I thought it wasn't too bad. And uh, we're going to be just putting these into the motherboard itself. Now these will be on dual channel here. So we'll drop these into slot, the first slot here and the third one along here. They've got these little clips on them, you just pull these back. Sometimes you only have one clip on one side and one rigid one on the other. But on this one it does have two clips on each side. And you should see a little notch there. And all we need to do is line that notch up on the board and slot it into place. Nice looking memory for the money, this, by Patriot. And uh, we're just going to slot this one in. So I'll probably do the uh, third one first. And uh, once we've got this into the slot, all you need to do is just push down on the outer edges. And you should hear a little click, which is the catches clicking into place. And that's it. It's that simple. There's nothing too difficult about building a computer nowadays. So we'll just put the other one in. And it will give you all this information in the motherboard manual. It will tell you exactly what slots to populate to get the best performance. And you can check that manual out if you're not familiar with uh, doing this sort of stuff. And you can see those little ridges on there matching up. I think it looks quite nice. There's a little red accents on the board there. And also red LED. So I think it'll tie in just, just nice. You're really limited when you're on a tight budget to try and uh, spend money where you can't spend you know, like cable, colour-coded cables and stuff like that for your power supply. All those things go out the window because you're on a tight budget. So you have to sort of make cutbacks somewhere and it's normally those things that go first. An RGB RAM is just an expense. It's much more money. So we had to do away with the RGB and just went with standard RAM. There's no difference with RGB and standard RAM. They both perform exactly the same. It's just one's got a bit of bling and one hasn't now I just wanted to show you these little handy little gadgets which you can use this is a magnetic parts tray and it's great for keeping all your screws in especially if you're like me and you're always losing screws when you're taking them out of the bag they go everywhere you always drop them and uh, this little magnetic tray is a great little tray because it's got a rubber bottom on it and also a magnet inside there which is super strong I'll just drop some screws in here and show you what it looks like. So basically when you're working around a computer desk, you can just put your uh, screws in here and they're not going to go anywhere and they're going to be in there nice and secure. And that way you don't lose them. And I'm always knocking them on the floor and you can never find a little tiny screw. Once you drop it on the floor, it's a nightmare. So those little screw trays are great. I'll leave all the links for this stuff in the video description. It's a nice little screwdriver set I found as well, which I wanted to check out. And uh, you can see here, this has got probably every little screw piece you need here, every bit in here. Very nice, you've got some uh, little picks here, and also a little magnetizer and demagnetizer. This is to magnetize the head of the screwdriver, and also demagnetize it if you don't want it magnetized. And it does come in pretty useful if you've never seen one of those there's a bigger version here which I'll show you very useful little gadgets if you want to magnetize your screwdrivers or demagnetize them and again it does come with its own screwdriver 
here and also some extension suction cup and some tweezers and some little spudgers in there very useful little kit if you're doing phones and laptops and other bits and pieces and this is the uh, magnetizer here you can just magnetize your screwdrivers and again it will just pick up the end right here and this was a non-magnetized screwdriver at the time and you, and you could just magnetize it it's that simple some useful little tools if you're into your little tools then i'll leave the link for those in the video description for you anyway let's get back to the build and uh, we're going to put down the drive for the windows operating system I'm just going to take this screw out of the board here now this comes in two parts this so i'm going to put the other bit back and there's a tiny little screw on top of it now i do like these msi uh, tomahawk motherboards uh, but this is the screw here and this is the b350 uh, motherboard so i'm just going to put that into its location here and then all we need to do is put down the little screw here now having a magnetic screwdriver here is very useful because these screws are so small and if you drop this on the carpet good luck we're trying to find it so there we go so I'm just going to just going to screw this down there we go it's that simple and that's going to be for our Windows installation or Linux if you want to use Linux or whatever other operating system you're going to put on there so that's basically that all done now and that's ready to go into the case so what I'm going to do now is get the IO shield into the case here so here is the case we're going to be using and I did a review on this this is quite a nice little case this is a Sahara P10 sync RGB with tempered glass and for a budget case a lot of these Chinese cases on the market nowadays are very good uh, for budget builds and uh, you get quite a few features on here yes it is lightweight and uh, the steel is not the thickest grade and the air filters are not the best in the world but when you're paying a small price for a case uh, what do you expect so you've got a glass panel on the side here tempered glass just taking the thumb screws out here and you've got to give me 10 out of 10 for that paisley shirt there so i'm just going to put those into the magnetic tray here and move the glass off now again you're getting also here an enclosure here for the power supply which you don't normally get on these sort of budget cases you've got a remote control for the RGB which must have fell out around the back which I'll get in a second and it comes with everything you need here so everything's been blacked out inside but it does come with its little pet hates which is the uh, expansion slots have punch outs rather than removable uh, screws so once you punch them out you can't put them back let me just remove this side panel here but I think it's great for a budget budget build like this and it's going to be ideal for what we need here so I'm just going to remove this bit here and then we can put in the IO shield you can see here we've got the fan controller here as well so you can have up to 10 fans in here which is quite a lot of fans if you wanted to put that many fans in I'm not sure why but some people do you've got room for two 2.5 inch bays there and also two three and a half inch on there as well there's your screws so you've got one fan at the back there one exhaust fan i'm going to put two more at the top just to give it a bit more bling uh, so that's what i'm going to be doing here we also need to put a couple of more motherboard risers on there as well on the board it's the io shield so we're just going to put this in and this just clips into position got the camera tripod in a way in a way which makes it absolute nightmare to try and film honestly try and build a computer with a camera there just makes it so much more harder there we go so these little brass screws they come in a kit and this motherboard needs three more of these down here so i'm just going to put these in now sometimes there's a bit of burr in here or a bit of paint and uh, it makes it very difficult to put these in now another little tip I want to give you here is when you're building these computers a lot of beginners will put these in finger tight only and what will happen is 
when you screw the motherboard in, the brass uh, screw will start to turn with it. And of course, what will happen is you then won't be able to remove the screw. Sometimes they use the wrong motherboard screws and then it gets halfway in and then they try to take it out and it starts to spin. And now you're, you know, got the motherboard stuck in the case and you can't get it out. And that's just a beginner's little error there that people make. So you want to tighten these up a little bit. And I'll show you a little ratchet set you can get. Or you can use whatever you want to use to tighten these down. You don't have to over tighten them. Just tighten them enough just to hold them into position here. And the reason why you want to do that is just to make sure that they don't come loose when you're screwing down. And uh, I've seen that happen, happen many times. So I'm just going to use this little ratchet set. It's a tiny little ratchet set here. You can use whatever you like, but this is what I'm going to be using. You can also get screwdrivers and things like that with those bits on the end of them to help you tighten them down if you wish. Entirely up to you which way you want to go about doing it. It's your build. Do it the way you want to do it. Now again, these are not home all the way down yet, so they do need to be tightened a little bit. And this is, a, as I said, a common mistake that people will make. They'll just offer up the board, start screwing in, and of course it will start spinning and then they can't take the screw out to release the board. Very common mistake. So just tighten these up a little bit here. And again, that camera tripod's in the way. There we go. That's done. And then once we get these done, what we can do is offer up the motherboard. And that just slots into position. And again, you've got the little grounding straps on the IO shield there, and they should be touching the the motherboard parts at the top there, you'll see. People bend these and cut them off and stuff like that. And you shouldn't do that. But there we go, that's uh, done nicely. All I need to do now is screw this down. So make sure you use the right screws, and uh, we can uh, screw this down. We should be good to go. So as you can see, it's a very small little cheap budget build this. Very affordable. And it's powerful enough to do a lot of things. Uh, the games that you can play with this type of build, you can play PUBG, uh, you can play you know, Fortnite, Witcher, all those games that you want to play, you can play with this. Grand Theft Auto, and have no problems playing these games. And it's a the RX 580 is a very, very good card right now. Very affordable. And it's a good way of getting into PC gaming at a very cheap cost. So just put one more screw down, and there we go. So now I'm just going to add in a couple of more of these RGB fans here. And I've got them, and they are, have to be the same fans as, as the fan controller, which are these uh, Sahara Sync ones. I did a review on these. Uh, but I'll be adding these in just to add a bit more bling to the case because we're not putting a water cooler up the top there it just looks a bit open so I just wanted to add some something up there to fill that space up a little bit and she's only young and she probably is going to enjoy that RGB stuff so might as well add a bit of bling to it and uh, I'll just put those in up the top there and they can remove them if they wish uh, they, they, they're on remote control they can turn them on or off which is always a nice added bonus. And these are the fans here that we're using. Now the fans that you use for this will have to be for the fan controller that we're using. So these should be just fine. And I'm just going to test here to make sure there's nothing that's going to be interfering with the fan itself. And I'll just tuck the cables down through the back and put them into the fan controller and we should be good to go there. And that shouldn't fill that void up the top there. Because we're not using a closed loop wall call system, it will look a bit bland up the top. So this should also help with uh, drawing air out of the case. And you can see how low grade that uh, still is. It's moving quite a lot. But that's what to expect when you're only paying a small premium for these sort of cases, really. So if you want something a bit more luxurious, then obviously you're going to have to spend a bit more money. So there we go. So that's all done. So we've got both of those in there now. And I and I will put the uh, there that is a magnetic uh, dust filter on top of that 
case that goes on there. And this is not a bad little budget case, to be honest. And that's what it looks like when they're all in. And you'll see it all turned on near the end. And I don't think it looks too bad, really. And remember, we're on a tight budget here. So when you're on a tight budget, you're limited to what you can actually do. Uh, you've got to do what that person wants. So what we need to do next is uh, just get these plugged into the fan controller here which comes with the case when you're buying this so that's a nice added bonus and this is one thing that really sort of frustrates me nowadays is as your eyes start to deteriorate as you get older it's so frustrating to try and plug small little things into places you can't see them now we've got a 600 watt EVGA power supply here bronze certified plenty of good enough for what we need here I will plug that other SATA cable in there before I ship it off to him so he's got extra cables there for drives in case he wants to add more drives in I know he does want to add more drives in at a later date so I'll leave those in the case and this is plenty powerful enough for what he needs and uh, not a bad little uh, power supply now this is another thing that amazes me when other techs talk about power supplies and they don't really understand that the manufacturer isn't EVGA of that power supply it's actually other companies that create these power supplies for them and they just put their brand on the outside of it and that's a common mistake that people make uh, you know so what we're going to do is put this power supply in it fits okay in there it's not too big you can see it's a standard size power supply some of the larger ones used to be very long like the rm series and hx and stuff like that they were a bit longer so to get the screws in here it's just four screws holding this power supply in now it's not a fully modular power supply it's a semi-modular but it's good enough for what he needs get these plugged in and you can see here the expansion slots there haven't got no screws on them so basically you have to punch them out so just before you punch them out make sure you punch the right ones out because they won't go back in which is sort of a, a negative for these sort of cheap budget cases that don't offer a few screws but it's all about cost at the end of the day they're trying to keep the cost down for the case so some things have to sort of go it's like building a budget system some things that you have to um, cut back on so there we got the fans installed. Now I've got this CPU cable coming through up the top here. I've plugged that in and uh, I just had to remove the fan again just to get the CPU cable through because it was really tight. I've got the 24 pin here that's going to go into the board. Again, once I've got everything in the board, I'll pull that back through. And uh, once we've got that in, Coming near the end now, all in now, all I need to do soon is just put the graphics card in, a bit of cable management, and uh, he's going to be putting the uh, hard drive in a little bit later on, but we should be pretty much good to go from here. Get Windows installed and uh, should be ready. So I'm just going to put in all the cables here now at the bottom. You'll see there's a bunch of cables here that I need to pull through. And also another thing with this case, there's no rubber grommets on here, as you'll see. And that's another thing that you may want to look out for when buying a case, especially at this sort of price point. And this is going to be the USB 3.0 uh, cable and also the USB and the audio for the front panel of the case. And also you've got all the umbilicals for the uh, motherboard that go into the power and also the power switch, the reset and the hard drive. All, all that is inside here. So I need to get all these plugged into the board. Now all this information will be in your motherboard manual. So you can read that up. Now the pin layouts are pretty straightforward and easy to follow. And once you've done it once or twice, you know it off by art really. And uh, once we get these all plugged in, you can do a bit of cable management and plug in the graphics card 
and that's the build completed then so let's just get these last few bits in now normally you can see here I'll leave these hard drive and power switch and all that to the end now you're not going to really be able to see me plug those in because my hand is in the way and it's very difficult to get a shot on those but I'll try and show you what the cables look like so you can see it but if you just do a, a search on Google for uh, front panel PC front panel um, pin layout you'll see it there'll be tons of them up there and these are the cables here and they just need to be plugged into the board now there's a plus and a minus and you need to put them into the right uh, way and I've plugged all these in as you can see and that's what it's what it basically looks like once you get them all plugged in there but it's very self-explanatory just have to put them in, into the the right ones and uh, we've got the audio cable in and also we've got the USB in there so we're pretty much good to go here now just need to get the graphics card in and we've got the Sapphire Nitro Plus here and uh, this is a really affordable graphics card if you if you want to get into PC gaming and you're on a tight budget then something like this the RX 580 or even the 570 4 gigabyte version or 8 gigabyte whatever one you can get your hands on there's not much difference uh, there you've got the sapphire which will light up uh, blue but you can change the color to whatever you like there with some software and again a very affordable uh, card it's got a back plate on here as well which is always nice and it does look good in the case it goes with the design of the case that's why i picked it uh, because it does go with the sort of msi tomahawk design motherboard now this card will play all AAA listed games and uh, you can play you know your PUBGs, your Fortnites, your Witcher, you can play pretty much whatever you like with this and it will play it okay. You know your Battlefield, your Grand Theft Auto, no trouble at all. And paired up with that Ryzen 3 1200 it should work just fine. I'm just testing here to make sure which ones that I need to punch out here. So I need to leave the top one in. You can see they just break off. And that's a really big pet eight of mine. These, this is from the old Pentium 4 days used to have to do this. And the amount of PCs that I used to go and visit uh, when I used to fix them. Uh, they used to see PC cases of half of them missing. <laughs> uh, so I just need to take that screw out. And uh, this will take that little back plate out here. There we go. Dell uses this method quite a bit as well uh, to hold in those. So let me just uh, get the graphics card now and push that in and we can uh, screw this down. Now again, this is uh, this was uh, built for someone. So if you're interested, interested in me building you a PC and you don't know how to build a PC and you want me to build you a PC and you live in the UK, uh, by all means give me a shout and uh, we can sort something out I'll build you a PC and ship it off to you no problem at all and I'll help you pick the parts tell me what your budget is and I can help you uh, get your dream computer again depending what what sort of level you want to sp spend will determine what parts you can have and this is the second person that's asked me to build on one on YouTube lately Funny enough so we'll just get this done and that does look really nice that card looks really nice inside that case with that board it just matches perfectly and you've got a bit of red accents there from the LED light as well and also on the accents on the board it looks quite nice this is good as good as you're going to get a cheap budget build now another question is should I wait for Ryzen 3 gen or should I buy now? Well, the prices for Ryzen 2 gens are really low and also Ryzen 1. So just entirely up to you. If you're just gaming, then buy now. There's not You're going to see much benefit, really, waiting for Ryzen 3rd gen. You might as well buy now and get yourself a cheap deal. And uh, there's some really good deals out there right now. So uh, we're just going to give this a graphics card a bit of power here. And you can see it's using a, a 6 pin and an 8 pin layout here so I just need to get those clipped in and this will give the graphics card a bit of power and I will change the color scheme on the 
sapphire logo there because it does light up uh, blue and I wanted to change it to some RGB color so we'll have a look at that and there's a little bit there's a little bit of software I can use to do that so I'm just going to push these in and get the cable management tied up so I've done a bit of cable management at the back you're not going to see this it's behind the back plate here uh, the side panel is going to be metal so you're not going to see it so but I do like to try and keep it as tidy as possible I've left a couple of spare ones which I'll tuck in down the bottom here so he can put in a couple of hard drives which he said he wanted to do so there for there and he just needs to run a SATA cable through there as well and make it uh, nice and tidy he's also got some space here for some drives if he wanted to put um, the solid state drives in there as well he can do that as well but other than that that is the actual build itself looks quite tidy nice clean looking not too bad for the money very cheap price and uh, should play games and keep her happy all I need to do now is try to sync all the RGB lights and get them uh, in sync and he can I think the RGB does about 51 different settings so you can change those settings and you can see that I've got it on like a pinky purple color I've even changed the sapphire on the graphics card there as well to tie it all in and it looks quite nice I think she'd be really happy with that and uh, for an eight-year-old that, that's a really nice computer and there's a close-up look now obviously we didn't do the the uh, ram pink you can see that red LED there on the board that'd be great if I could change that to a, a pinky purpley color but I couldn't uh, but when you're on a budget you're trying to tie in colors as much as you can and for the price this lot come come to uh, was a pretty decent uh, budget build and there's, there's the side glass panel on the side and I think it turned out really nice does look pretty nice for the sort of price um, performance so what we're going to do here is I'm going to run some ben some benchmarks here as well and I'll leave all the links for the parts that I use in this build in the video description and again I'm not going to be showing you any gameplay benchmarks I'm just going to run a heaven benchmark here and there's the results that I got but trust me when I tell you this will play PUBG no problems and other games as well with this setup it should play it no problems at all and uh, if you're interested in a build and you uh, want me to build your PC and you're in the UK don't forget shoot me an email and we can have a chat or drop on discord and we can have a chat on there and I'll do my best to help you out I'll just quickly show you the Cinebench uh, score there which isn't too bad for a budget build anyway I'm gonna wrap this one up it's been a long video sorry about that guys just really sort of run down with this flu still and uh, hopefully be back to normal in the next few days but anyway my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you enjoyed the video guys give it a thumbs up if you did and i shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching have a great day bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos